Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tsai. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at this Jellycomb folding Bluetooth keyboard with a trackpad. And so Jellycomb is, I think, one of the brand names that's associated with this. However, I think this has gone through a lot of OEM, so you might find different brands on this. What I'm going to do is leave a link to the Amazon entry where I purchased this from, and you're probably going to find one, or you might find a very similar one, which is branded slightly differently. So today I'm going to do a quick unboxing. I'm going to pair it with a couple of devices and then just see how the technology works. So let's do the unboxing. So so here we're going to open up the lid and then we have our device here seems to be packaged well and then we've got this device which can unfold so in terms of feel it feels kind of a little bit flimsy actually so in terms of build quality it feels okay it's mostly kind of plasticky the travel on the keys is actually quite decent for something this portable and when you fold it up, it is really quite thin. If we compare it to say something like my iPhone 12 Pro, it's bigger of course, but uh, and obviously much wider. However, it's also quite thin as well. So if I compare with the thickness of my phone, it's you know, a very portable device. And what's interesting about this is that we have the UK layout. So we've got the pound key here. So if you're used to that on a UK keyboard, we also have the at sign here, which is, not, which is standard for UK. And then the quote sign is there. So it's quite interesting because a lot of these OEM keyboards, they're built for international audiences. So they often have a US keyboard where the at sign is reversed. So it's quite nice to have that. Another cool thing is that the control key is on the bottom left. So this often better for if you want to use this for some light gaming, which I'm not really sure you want to do that. And the function key is actually here. So that gives you access to this function menu here, crucially like mute and volume as well. So this seems to be quite a good layout for the actual keys. If I just have a look at the actual layout, that feels pretty good. It's pretty small, but uh, yeah, feels nice. The trackpad, I'm gonna test out in a moment when I pair this with a device. On the top here, we have an on off switch, and then we have a micro USB charging port. So of course, micro USB not used so much anymore. It'll mean that I have to carry around a spare micro USB cable. Some devices still require, so most power banks, for example, are gonna require that. However, we're gonna look at the box again, and then we have the various cables that we need. USB-A to micro USB. We've also got a USB-C to micro USB. So if you wanna charge it from a MacBook or something like that, that'll work. And then we have micro USB to micro USB. So if you've got another micro USB device, like an old Android phone, then that's going to work for that. These are not so common. I haven't actually seen one of these before. It's nice that they included three different cables. So a quick scan in the manual. Here we've got the instructions for Bluetooth pairing, Bluetooth connect, power switch, etc. These are all of the various function key shortcuts. It's got different ones for iOS, Android, and Windows. And then we've also got some touchpad gestures as well. So anyway, let's have a look at how this performs. So first thing I'm gonna do is pair this with my iPhone 12. So what I'm gonna do is go to Bluetooth mode here, and then I'm gonna put this into pairing mode. So right now the keyboard has been turned on, and I'm gonna hold down the button here. Here we can see the pairing light is turned on, and also I can see Bluetooth 3.0 keyboard is available here. So I'm gonna press on that. And now we are paired. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of typing, testing, one, two, three test. So that T is a little bit small, but it'll take some getting used to because that's exactly where the hinge is. So the T and the V here are extra tiny, but that's okay. Um, let's see. At, of course that, of course the at symbol needs to be reversed if I want to get this to work on iOS. However, I'm not really going to be typing that much on iOS. So that's all working. So let's give this a quick go on my iPad. So I'm just gonna to go to Bluetooth settings. So I'm already paired with my iPhone. Let's see how it repairs again. So I'm gonna hold down the pairing button. And straight away, we've got the ability to pair with the Bluetooth 3 keyboard. This is despite the fact that I was paired to my iPhone earlier. So I've got my notes app open, testing, one, two, three. And that's all working. So it actually seemed to pair really quickly, even though it was paired to my other device. This is all working. And let's have a look at the trackpad. So we've got the ability to left click. We've got some right click as well. We've got a context menu here. This kind of feels okay. Not the most responsive in the world, but it will do me fine as a travel keyboard. So I can see myself holding onto this and then packing it with my iPad and then being able to take this on the go. So lastly, I've got my Steam Deck. So this is definitely a use case, which I might consider using quite a lot. This is so that we're able to play some kind of FPS games with a mouse as well. 
Let's just see how it performs. So I'm press the theme button, go to settings, and then Bluetooth. And then we're going to go ahead, unfold the keyboard, and then we're gonna press the Bluetooth button again. It's gonna go straight into pairing mode. And we're just waiting for this to appear on this list. And it does. Here we're gonna pair it. And now we're fully paired. So that actually worked really fast. A lot of devices, they take ages to repair especially when they're connected to a different device. We have our two finger gesture here, which allows us to scroll on the sidebar. What we're actually gonna do is to press the Steam button again. We're gonna press power, and then we're actually gonna switch to desktop because I wanna use this as kind of like a desktop computer to see how this performs. So one thing I've definitely noticed is that the rejection on this trackpad isn't great. So we've got left click and right click here, just as kind of painted little images on it. There's no separate left and right click functionality on here. So if you're trying to click on something and then you move your trackpad as well, it kind of works. Sometimes it doesn't work that well. So it's definitely not a magic trackpad. It's nothing like an Apple trackpad at all. It's kind of a low grade laptop quality trackpad, but it does work. It, it does allow you to do things slightly easier than using the Steam Deck touchscreen. So it does kind of work. So would I use this for gaming? It's pretty hard to say. Let's try and load up a game. So in terms of gaming, it feels okay. If you wanted to do WSD keys, it does work pretty well. However, the thing to mention is that the control key, if you use that to crouch a lot, it's gonna be a little bit impacted. Of course, this is a tiny compact keyboard, but that's gonna be a bit annoying because you kind of expect that to be here. That's the natural position for it on a full size. So control is small. It's quite nice. We've got two keyboard space bars here. So that's quite nice. And kind of the rest of the keys are all there and will make sense. One thing that I would mention is that there's no escape key by default. You have to use function escape to get there. Otherwise it does the kind of tilde key instead. So just be aware of that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily game with this trackpad, of course. Trackpad gaming is pretty miserable. You're gonna want a Bluetooth mouse if you're gonna pair it with this. And that would kind of make this redundant, uh, more of like a backup thing so you don't have to use it. I'm going to be continuing to use this as kind of my Steam Deck keyboard for the time being. However, if I wanted to play any serious FPS games, I'd definitely be getting myself a Bluetooth mouse. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. This is the fantastic one X9 guys, and it's, uh, it's capable of USB and also Bluetooth support too. So anyway, that is my initial impressions of the Jellycomb folding Bluetooth keyboard. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.